camera live. Ah, yay. And right side up. Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is Lisa and Carol at Big Cat Rescue in Tampa. And I'm sorry I'm a little bit late today. Uh, that's part of the volunteer experience here. You never know what kind of things are going to come up in your day. So we actually had a delivery of food for the cats, of meat. So we were cleaning and we were, it was all hands on deck to help unload the truck. So that put us a little bit behind on cleaning. Oh, I see him back there with this. Oh my gosh. He's <laughs> just, hilarious. oh my goodness. He has completely stolen my heart. We have found our first cat here. So while we are approaching Gilligan, I'm going to share with you that we are stopping at Gilligan because we are going to be looking at a forever home, which is a book that I have written and my daughter has illustrated. And it is about several cats here at Big Cat Rescue. So those of you that are new to all this, um, we just came through this gate because this is a part of our safety protocol. Back before COVID hit, we used to be able to give tours and this where we're driving along would be the tour path and that's where you would be as a tour guest. But you're only to pass through this gate if you are a properly trained person here as a volunteer or staff member or intern. So that's what that's about. And that just offers that extra level of protection so that nobody is getting too close to the cage um, or the enclosure where the cat's um, paws and claws can reach. <laughs> so that's not a good idea. So Gilly's being handsome over here. Hello, so handsome. Oh, you're not being silly anymore. You put your feet no, back down. He, didn't, he was on his back and he was showing everybody his belly. It was adorable. You're so handsome. Yes, you are. So this book, as I mentioned, is about um, the sanctuary cats, and I'm going to read to you a page about Gilligan. And what I was inspired by, is it all right if I, mm -hmm. yeah. I was inspired by thinking about the cat's internal life and what their sensations and feelings must have been going from the very tragic circumstances that they were in before they came to Big Cat Rescue and then what their feelings must have been after being here and feeling safe and um, well taken care of and not abused any longer. So this is Gilligan's page. This is his before. All I smell is death. I cannot escape my filth. Freedom is a dream. And his after. Walking through the ferns, hooting as I move along, then lying in the shade, which he's doing for us very nicely right now. So it's, it's really something to think about the condition that he and the other cats that he was rescued with were in before they came here. You look how gorgeous he is now, that gorgeous coat. He's obviously very healthy, um, very well cared for, and that was not the case uh, before his rescue. It was, it was a pretty awful situation, so. And people are saying they're having a hard time hearing today. So okay, I will speak project. up. <laughs> I will project. <laughs> Did you like that Gilligan? I thought you would switch. He likes, he likes when I sing his song is When You Wish Upon a Star. <laughs> and I usually sing to him. Do you want me to sing to you? When you wish upon a star Makes no difference who you Anything your heart desires will come to you. When your heart is in your dreams, no request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star, as dreamers do, fate is come. She gives to those who love a sweet fulfillment of their secret longing. Like a bolt out of the blue, fate steps in and sees you through. When you wish upon a star, your dream 
thought he was going to clap there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely, wasn't it, Gilligan? I usually try to sing that to him anytime I'm around, out <laughs> cleaning, as I, I like to come around the back, and he's sitting right there. This is give song. him a little song. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to so, go see Lo um, Frankie since he's out? We hardly sure, ever see him. See and he's going to be the cat on Sunday, so if you're a singing Sunday watcher, Frankie Bobcat's going to be the 2 o'clock singing Sunday cat. He was over there calling us, and that's rare. Yeah, he's been very social lately. <laughs> well, we don't have food. So for those of you that don't know, this is his feeding lockout. So what that means is what, just what it sounds like. That concrete slab is where his food goes. And that's protected by that pipe. It keeps the, there's lots of falling leaves this time of year, so it keeps the leaves out of the water. And it's raised up a little bit, so he doesn't decide to pee in his water. And what we have to do as feeders this door right here is called a lockout door. Now, Frankie is not one of the lockout cats, but some of our cats, um, the small cats, have to have that door lowered before we feed them uh, because of their age, their level of aggression when they're getting ready to be fed. But with the bigger cats, um, it's always lockout doors, like tigers, two sections of small cats and I did the front section this morning and he's in what's called the center section. So that's why he thinks he can fool you. He thinks, I don't know, he's already been fed. Exactly. Two sparks. And you'll notice there's um, an extra protection there. That's for a couple of things. Um, it also keeps um, the birds out that like to get at the cat's food. We do have buzzards around here. See, he's leaving now. He's given up. I heard today they're moving to a different system where the buckets actually have lids so that the birds can't grab the food off the that. carts. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, you sure? I can't <laughs> What good are we, huh? I <laughs> also want to point out that that's his feeding lockout, but he has all this section right behind you and then also another bubble directly behind that. So he has quite a bit of space to wander. Of course, not the same amount of space as you would have if you were living in the wild, like nature intended, but it's the best that we can do here as a sanctuary. And that's why we really promote um, not keeping cats in captivity and really um, are working hard to have laws passed, namely the Big Cat Public Safety Act, to ensure that people aren't able to keep the cats in captivity or breed them in captivity. Because once a cat is in captivity, it, it doesn't work. That door doesn't swing both ways. They can't go out and live in the wild. Oh. Yeah, he really looks good. <laughs> All right. Should we move on? I'm thinking down the road. Probably is it Yeah. And you may notice that my shirt is yellow, and I'm going to open up this gate. You'll notice the sign on the gate is yellow. That means I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> now, if sometimes you see me go through a gate that's not yellow, that's because I'm with Carol. So basically, Carol is the ultimate decider when it comes to anything at the sanctuary. Oh, exactly, Jamie. Jamie? <laughs> I the red stuff I buy her all the time. <laughs> she knows all the rules and all of there the you go. protocols. There uh, you go. Oh, I'm supposed to, I want to remember to give a shout out to Maze. Hi, Maze, if you're out there watching. 
your grandma told me that you might be watching today, so I want to say hello. It's Joyce's granddaughter. We have somebody watching from Denmark. That's amazing. That's what I love about this. I love that we can reach people everywhere in the world. Speaking of which, I don't want to forget, so I'm going to say it now while I'm remembering. This book that I mentioned, A Forever Home, you can find that on an app called Storio. That's S-T-O-R-Y-I-O. -O, and it's a free app. And it's got this book included so if you download the app and you go to kids books it is in there and carol is reading the book so i see he's in the den over here uh -huh. so we'll need to go around yeah he hasn't moved since we cleaned this morning well, <laughs> the same spot yep. mm -hmm. exactly all right so we are approaching zucari who is a serval we just met Gilligan, who is a Canada lynx, and we met Frankie, who is a bobcat, and now we're going to meet Lisa. He's like, I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh. So you were able to come in that red one because of what? Red is. Well, things have changed because it used to be that there were red shirt cleaners, but then when we stopped doing tours, now it's just it's, there are no red shirt cleaners, basically. So it's all yellow? But red is lower than yellow, right. so you could go in yellow or red. Green is the only one that's higher. So what he just did is a very classic move, a serval hiss. That's like a lion roaring or a tiger chuffing. That's just what they do. And his name is Zukari. And I'm going to go ahead and show you his before and after page. So before, no sun or fresh air, tame and wild altogether, forced to live as one. There is room to move, exploring, chasing, smelling a frog or a snake. So this picture here shows the condition that he was kept in. So he was rescued um, from Ohio from a breeder. So he was basically kept in half of somebody's garage. And you can imagine, look at all this that he lives in now. This bubble, this bubble, that bubble. He's got all this space now. And he does, he's only five years old, so he does love to explore the wildlife that happen to find their way into the enclosure. And we have a lot of cats here from Ohio because Ohio has really good laws when it comes to ownership and breeding of these cats and they enforce them. They um, confiscate animals when they are not being treated appropriately. And in Zucari's case, there are cats that we also have here called Savannah cats, which are um, a hybrid of a serval and a domestic cat. And the person who was breeding fought to get kind of under the radar with having being allowed to have hybrid cats and they found her out <laughs> she was caught and the next two cats that we're going to see um, came from the same breeder he's so handsome so Zucari is one of those cats that I was talking about earlier who's a lockout cat when we feed <laughs> he's only five years old and he's very very active very aggressive when it comes to food so we always make sure that lockout door is down before we put any food in there but you can see he's nice and relaxed now breakfast has already happened <laughs> a chance to digest and now we're just kind of in a sunny spot it can be very misleading that they seem so calm and relaxed exactly. and then you bring food into the mix and they just If something were to run around in front of him, you know, a lizard or whatever, he would snap to attention pretty quickly. They are obligate carnivores and they are apex predators, so they're just behaving the way nature intended them to behave. And it doesn't matter that there were attempts made to keep them 
They never can be domesticated. Keeping a cat like this in captivity is not the same as domesticating. Domesticating takes, I don't know how many years of how many you know, thousands selective of years? breeding <laughs> and, and purposeful, you know, the reason why we have house cats and dogs and that kind of thing. Um, it doesn't happen just because you keep them in the house and feed them cat food. That doesn't make them domestic. So. People often make that mistake. So a lot of the hybrid cats here and also some of the other servals that we have here are former pets for that reason. People think it's cool, exotic, whatever the lure is to have a cat like that as a pet. And then they find out that they bite, they claw, they pee on everything. They don't digest cat food. And then they get, as people often do, get tired of something. But it's not like buying a, a new car or new furniture. Um, when it comes to living things, they, they have to live somewhere. So we end up with a lot of those rescues. And I want to mention for, I'm going to educate some of those kids out there who I hope are watching. This is a sanctuary. This is not a zoo. And we have very specific guidelines here that keep us accredited as a sanctuary. And we don't buy, trade, or sell our cats. We don't breed them. That means we don't let them have kittens, cubs, and we don't um, pet them or touch them. So any of those things, if we would do that, we would not be a true sanctuary. And we have put Zuccari to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> And you mentioned the other two, so I'm guessing yep, we're going to cut through and, here. Um, since Bye. she's most likely back here in the back somewhere. We like to go on vacation. It's new sights, new sounds, new smells, especially if whatever cat was in there right before. But I do think some of the smaller cats seem it's almost a little bit over. They seem to snuggle in the back. Yeah, she's only done. together in there before is they were kept together for breeding purposes that same place where Zucari was in Ohio so you'll notice that in there after they are on two separate pages because they don't live together. Chaos and Cyrus. We live together a choice that was made for us like losing our claws. We have our own space no demands upon us now free to be ourselves. There she is. And you'll notice that caracals have these really distinctive ears on the tufts on the top. And that is how you can always identify a caracal. And what they are known for is being able to jump and catch birds right out of the air. So again, why somebody would think that would be a great idea to have as a house pet <laughs> is beyond. I don't understand, but they are beautiful. I think people are attracted to beautiful things and exotic things. So. But they're not things, they're flowers. They want something beautiful by the mouth of Persian And that is something that is different about us being the sanctuary is animals are kept on display when you visit something like a zoo or really anywhere that's trying to make profit off showing animals. They want the animals to be on display. That's how they make money. And it doesn't really respect the animal's right to be seen or not be seen as they choose what they're feeling. You saw Frankie Bobcat was very social and was okay with us being around and, and came over, but this chaos would like us to stay right exactly where we are and that would be just fine. So we have to respect that when it comes 
these two accounts. I guess maybe if I to get decided. You're still where you were. <laughs> you know those birds make you gorgeous, don't you? He's a little, like, tiny bit more social than Chaos is. He doesn't mind quite as much. So he was the other caracal that was looking for Chaos. His name is Cyrus. It was like, here's a hiss turned into a yawn. <laughs> Any cute little caracal things? Oh. <laughs> I love it. Did you say that louder so they could hear you? Yeah. Well, you just bumped the viewership up by yeah, exactly. 50. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, quick, you gotta hear Cyrus. You're just killing Lisa with that. <laughs> You're making her smile. Oh, they liked your timeshare analogy. Yeah. <laughs> Only difference is there's no money involved. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't have to listen to a boring presentation. Exactly. <laughs> Unless they consider this their boring <laughs> presentation. <laughs> Maybe they do. <laughs> Why don't we let those human stocks in the field? They're calling you pumpkin head. Doing the Fleming a little bit. You might see your house cats do that as well the Fleming response when they smell something interesting and they, they kind of open their mouth for a moment like that and that's so they can get even more scent in they have receptors on them. he actually had his mouth open that's why I didn't turn to you <laughs> <laughs> that So the weather has improved a lot here. It was very chilly for a few days, so I think all the cats are enjoying the sun is out. And they like cooler temps for sure, but not cold, cold. definitely see a different reaction from him in chaos. <laughs> pretty, pretty striking.
I think I see somebody talking about supporter surprises. We have a group called Supporters. If you go to facebook.com slash bigcatrescue up at the top where it says support or donate, um, if you pledge to donate 99 cents per month, you get all kinds of extra videos from the keepers and there's going to be, um, Howie is going to do a special Ask Me Anything session for you guys. I don't know when, it's going to be like in the next week or so, I think. And um, so be sure and sign up over there. It's only 99 cents a month and it gets you all kinds of extra exposure, behind the scenes stuff, videos and keeper moments and all kinds of cool things. Cyrus? You're breaking the internet, son. I heard it. up behind her. You think you're being so sneaky? <laughs> you're not so sneaky. So beguiling. What is that? Yeah. All right. Well, that was a nice diversion. Yes, it was. <laughs> well, we can either go around to Jinx or we can go back to the park. We're halfway to Jinx now. <laughs> so this cage we're walking around for the next five minutes here is still all of Cyrus. <laughs> I think this is uh, Chaos's cage, isn't it? No, it's a, yes, it is. Mm 
yeah. And then on the left here is Vacation Rotation, which is, um, or I'm sorry, Funcation, which is where we saw Chaos is currently got her two weeks. They keep water in either of these buildings. I'll go in there and see if I can find him. <laughs> Where are you? Sorry to swing everybody around that way. Jinx could be anywhere back here in these enclosures. He's got four or five of them, at least, that are all connected to each other. Not in that den. I see you, Manny. I see Manny, but not Jinx yet. Oh, there is that him over there at the base of the hill. Want to talk about him while he's laying here? Sure. This is Manny. And Manny is a jaguar. There's a few things that you can use to distinguish a jaguar and a leopard. One is that their heads are massive. If you look at his jawline, that's because they have this incredible bite pressure, which is how they kill their prey. They just basically bite through the skull. He's also got a much shorter tail than a leopard spots and rosettes are much larger and spaced out. And they just have a tend to have a more muscular, stockier kind of build than a leopard. Which tends to be longer limbed and have a nice long tail. Jaguars are native to South America, Central and South America. And actually I think they're still finding them in the lower southwest United States, although greatly reduced in numbers. Thank you for that Manny. <laughs> Manny's a little unusual in that he came to us from a zoo. It's not typically how the cats come to the cat rescue. But the zoo was trying to do the right thing and 
approved enclosures and they just they're just making a stinky face what we talked about earlier the plumbing response is he just peed and now he wants to make sure that he said it appropriately <coughs> taking it all in. good work manny So the zoo decided that a sanctuary would be best for Manny as far as his mental health, his physical health. But once again, once a cat has lived in captivity, such as a zoo, there's no way he could be re-released into the wild anymore. And I think we may actually have to go out that gate and back oh, in the other right. one to get to him. <clears throat> Well, of course he had to be <laughs> that way. Hi, <laughs> G. In addition to his great camouflage, he's this flat leopard. You're so flat. <laughs> what are you doing? Sneaky buzz. Or is he just crouching? Maybe, yeah, he might be doing something there. What's going on on your nose there, buddy? You got snack. Did you know that you're in a book? It's you. It's so, so you. Is, this is before Paige. I smell fear from him. He needs to be in control, but I am not tame. This place is mine now. I choose to be seen or not. I have trained them all. Well, you lived up to that one and today. As you can see, <laughs> that is very true of Jinx. So Jinx is another cat that came to us from Ohio from confiscation from that state. And he came along with three tigers, Jasmine, Sapphire, and Duchess. And they were here for about four years before this became their forever home. The owner was still trying to get them back. It was an ongoing court issue. So we were all very, very happy on that day, right, Jinx? The day that they said, get to stay. Jinx is amazing. He's 21 years old, which is like being well over 100 for humans. But you saw how quickly he got over here. <laughs> yes, hey. Hey, handsome. And I think you can see if you look closely his spots. So he is a leopard. And there's often a confusion about using the term black panther. And he, um, leopards and jaguars are the cats that produce melanism, this black coat. And the spots are still there. And you can see them when the light shines on them the right way. Let's see if I can zoom in without getting too close to him. <clears throat> you can see how nice and long his tail is. That's how we know he's a leopard and not a jaguar. That and the shape of his head and his limbs. So leopards are native to either Africa or Asia. They were found in both places. And you can imagine that being black and living in the jungle and hunting at night is pretty good camouflage. 
So that's why this is a naturally occurring trait in jaguars and leopards. It's the exact opposite of having a white tiger, which is not a naturally occurring trait. And for the same reason, it would not ensure that cat's survival. It's a terrible camouflage. It would make it very difficult for a cat to hunt and to be able to stay safe. So if you hear about white tigers needing saved, don't believe it. We're telling you the story. All right, he's had enough of us. Unlike Cyrus. <laughs> Doing good. I sat there for a minute. Our, uh, my phone was gonna give me some trouble, but I think I got it back in the stabilizer to where it's not jiggling. I love to watch them bathe. Getting lots of hearts, Manny. Getting all the hearts. We're still being observed. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he's done letting us see him, he's not done looking at us. <laughs> I just did an interview for, for Flamingo Magazine, and it's a Florida-based magazine. And they're like, why are you based in Florida? It's because, like, every day is another day in paradise. Exactly. Storms over fires anytime. That and, and however many feet of snow that Ugh. people got. Not for me. Oh, she's right there. Oh, good. Thanks, Nikita. Nikita, lion. She likes it better short anyway. <laughs> so the reason I chose this for her before is Nikita was found chained uh, inside a house. And she was used as a uh, to guard illicit substances. And she had also been very badly declawed. So when 
and she was uh, was attempted to introduce her to a zoo, to a pride of lions. Um, it was not possible because of her being declawed. So she ended up here with us in her private world back here. So she has this unroofed section and then next door a roof section. Our tigers and lions have unroofed sections because they're not climbers or jumpers. That's why they can have that. But whenever there's any kind of storm activity, high winds, um, they do get transitioned over to their roof section for their protection. So to make sure there's no falling branches that can provide an um, escape route. And if you really love Nikita, we have an explore.org camera that is attached to a website 24-7. You can check in and see how Nikita's doing. She also has one at her oh, box. Oh, feeding lockout as well. Huh? So every morning when she gets fed around oh, 8 o'clock right. or so, you guys can watch her getting fed. That's a treat. Yeah, she's crazy about food. I did a ride along with one of the feeders uh, on Sunday and got to see her getting fed. And yeah, she's really into her food. <laughs> <laughs> and she crunches those chicken dumps, drumsticks like they're potato chips. <laughs> Oh, it'll really make you cringe. And she had a little, little bit of a low growl while she was eating, you know, just enough to let you know. Also got to see Jinx get fed. <laughs> He's actually very much a gentleman when he eats. Wow. He doesn't, he doesn't come in and gobble. I'm told the Guatemala tigers are actually pretty good about their food and their enrichment and such, or their um, afferent. I'm trying to think, I saw Max get fed, kind of from a distance, because I did. I was doing a ride along. What that means is um, that I ride in the cart with the person who's feeding, but I don't go behind barrier with them because that just, as I mentioned, I'm not trained um, to be there. And it's one thing to be with Carol and filming. It's another thing to go with a bucket of food. <laughs> So you want to grab the cart and then head to yeah. Priya? Is she next on your list? Yes, Miss Priya, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Unless Manny wants to do a tiger impression. She life <laughs> by comparison anyway. Yeah, I mean still not happy by any means, but to some of the others. I'm seeing another view of Funcation here as we walk. So Manny would also have this area when it's his turn in Jinx. So you can see that it's um, big for chaos the character. In there. And that's why it has a roof on it as well. But actually, even the bobcats, I've seen those bobcats like scoot up the <laughs> side of an enclosure like Spider Man. So <laughs> even the small cats could. All right, I will look, watch comments while we drive. 
I apologize that I don't call out too many of the comments because I'm trying to walk and um, keep an eye that the cats are in the scene and that we're both being safe. Exactly. But also I noticed today for some reason all of the comments seem to keep going back up like a hundred comments before and so it's like not oh, really? in real time. So I, that's why I keep flipping oh, the screen I see. and it's like it keeps going back so I don't know what's happening there. Like, thank you for sharing Priya's bio. Did see that? Oh, <laughs> actually, um, my they're like really tall socks. Um, we had something go on here called Secret Serval during the holidays, and that was one of the gifts I got from my Secret Serval. So they're very fun. They go all the way up to my knees. They have little cat ears, little cat face. Aww, that's so cute. <laughs> and that's really helpful because you guys wear boots so much. You exactly. Can get all the way up, or you'll get blisters on your calves. All right, we're hoping that we get a glimpse of Priya at the end here. Making sure she's not like laying on the bank. Although I never see her do that, like Hoover used to do it. She, there was a time when I would see her over there. Maybe, it, I want to say maybe more in hotter weather. Hi, Duchess. <laughs> and you didn't make the book because I put Jinx in. So he made the cut out of the Fab Four. <laughs> well, there was no doubt that was going to happen. Well, you know. <laughs> I tell you, these days, um, Mr. Gilligan is stealing my heart. He's such a sweetie. Did you see her in there? Priya! Priya! All right, bear with us. Carol is going to go see if she can find Priya. And I want to say hello to everybody who's out there while we're waiting here. Nope. Yeah, she's out. I don't, you can see, um, I'm going to let Carol do this because otherwise I probably mess it up. Do you want to show him her, her space here? So she has quite a lot of space that she can be in, as a tiger should. Look, all of those woods back there. She could be anywhere in those ferns. Well, did you want to read her story? Yes, I will read her story. So this is her before. There was life inside, now constant pain is with me. Where are the little ones? Grass, sun, and water, there is no more pain inside, splashing in my lake. So Priya represents, unfortunately, what is a very tragic story for many tigers in constant breeding for tiger cub for the petting industry. She is just one example of tigers that are used to breed well beyond what should be expected of them. In the wild, they would breed every two to three years because nature, again, has it figured out. It takes about two years for a tiger or cub to grow to maturity and be able to survive on their own. So during that time, they're with mom. And mom is teaching them all the things they need to know to be a tiger. So when you snatch tiger cubs away, like pretty much at, immediately after birth, um, they are missing out on all that. And it is forcing uh, the females to breed much more than is natural. So when Priya arrived here, she was very ill from what she had been through with this constant breeding. And it was only through the amazing veterinary care that we have here and our hospital that we have here on site that they were able to save Priya's life. Success story, very much before and after. Somebody said you forgot to set an appointment with her. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I forgot to mention, you know, I was very busy this morning. I forgot to mention that we were doing this again today. 
It's like, have your people call my people. <laughs> She was swimming a little bit this morning. I don't know if some of you out there might have been watching the Explore camera over on Tiger Lake. So she was having a little morning dip when I got here this morning. Wow. So where can people find those cameras? At explore.org. And that is a 24-7 um, website. Or the cameras are 24-7, I should say. Um, we have Tiger Lake. We have Vacation Rotation, which is the bigger version of what we looked at earlier for the tigers, and that's two and a half acres. Um, we have Bobcat Rehab, we have, oh, no, yes, yes. Sometimes See, tigers or leaves? Sometimes the enclosure fooled me, and I'm trying to see her. Yep, gotcha. <laughs> you fooled me. She says, I want to be in the movies. I'm a tiger. Can I be? So, Nikita, Vacation Rotation, Tiger Lake, Bobcat Rehab. Am I missing something? Oh, Funcation has one now as well. And I think the hospital? The hospital has a camera. Um, we're putting them all over there by Kimba and Max. Those should be online in the next week or so, I hope. If I thought I could make Priya come out, we would stay here a little bit longer. <laughs> I think probably we're going to have to call it a day for today. But once again, the book is A Forever Home. And once again, you can find that on the Storio app, being read by Carol. And that is a free app that you can download and just search on the kids' books on there. And you will, I think it's the very first book that pops up when you do that. So thank you very much for being here today, for joining us. And it was a great day. Absolutely. Always is a great day here. <laughs> and have a perfectly awesome rest of the week. I hope to see you Sunday at 2 for Singing Sunday. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everybody.